Welcome to this video on industrialization of digital technologies. In this video, we will focus on fundamental concepts we need to take into consideration to move from an MVP towards a serious product. But let's first elaborate on an example. Consider you are new in town and you don't know anyone, but you need urgently a cake for your kid's birthday. Now I come along and tell you that I will bake the best cake in the world for you. How could you trust me? My line of argumentation would be as follow. I can make you the best cake in the world for your kids, but the constraint would be your kids have no allergies and chocolate cake is the best cake of all. Are you still satisfied? Brilliant, let's move on. I can assure you this claim by showing you my development environment. The most modern kitchen in the European Union with high quality IoT enabled kitchenware. Okay, good environment does not make a good cake. I also work with the best product ingredients, certified organic products freshly delivered. But you might say, does he really know how to make a cake from these ingredients? I have Oma's secret recipe that some Viennese bloke copied from her and is now selling in his hotel. Sounds like a decent approach, or? But how would you know that I know anything about baking? That brings me to the personal insights towards me. I'm an automotive guy and Michelin gave me five stars for that. How does that link to our topic and some industrialization of a product? First, the development environment relates to industry norms. Second, the ingredients list to the bill of materials or bomb. Third, my OMA's recipe to the development process descriptions. And fourth, the Michelin stars to adequately trained and skilled people. Based on these pillars of trust in the capabilities of the product, the process and the design, the sweet spot of a proper product that satisfies customer needs and cope with the guarantees and regulations while being efficiently developed can be achieved. Following these lines of argumentation and structuring helps to mitigate recurring problems occurring in multiple industries. Like for example, poor requirements management, leading to incomplete or imprecise requirements. Poor project management, resulting in cost or deadline overruns. Testing that lacks in systematic approaches. Quality assurance that is seen as roadblocker rather than a key enabler. And lacking of configuration or version management. Building trust in a product is thus achieved by trusted development abilities, like processes, skilled workers, instructions. Of course, trusted production facilities, and trust in the product features itself. Such a building up of trust can be seen equivalent to customer satisfaction. But what does the term trust stand for? How is it meant or measured? This depends on the domain context and the application. As an umbrella term, we talk about dependable system engineering. And what exactly are these dependability attributes now? Here are seven dependability attributes and some very prominent examples for each of them. Availability is the readiness for correct service. The example is the emergency room. Reliability, the continuity of correct service without interrupt. Best example, a satellite or orbiter. Safety, focusing on the absence of catastrophic consequences to the users and the environment. The best, or here the worst example, a safety test gone wrong in 1986. Confidentiality, the prevention of unauthorized disclosure of information. Most well-known example, the asterisks when we enter passwords. Integrity, the absence of improper system alterations. Most bespoke example of technology here is the blockchain. Maintainability, the ability to undergo modifications and repairs. Maybe best example, the original Golf, still maintained by people half the age of the car. And for those of you who counted, number seven is missing. The seventh ability would be security, which is a composition of CIA, confidentiality, integrity and availability. Depending now on the nature of the product itself, the operational domain, 
and the customer expectations, these dependability attributes need to be considered and balanced accordingly. But more to this later in this course. Similar to the dependability attributes, sometimes customer needs need to be balanced out and attuned. To understand the customer needs and maximize customer satisfaction. One way to approach this topic is via the CTQ flowdown. In the example, the CTQ flowdown of a famous coffee shop is exemplified. The value that is important to the customer, a warm coffee in a friendly environment, is broken down into different quality criteria of the service or product. These criteria are further linked to measurable indicators, like waiting times or satisfaction on a Likert scale. This helps to balance the important factors and helps to make compromises. For our MOOC endeavor, we ask you to reflect on how to move from an MVP idea to a serious product. What are important factors for your domain and your product context? Discuss with your peers in the forum by writing at least one article about your domain and giving feedback to some other domain context. See you in the next blog or soon face to face.